expert, multiple unusual movements in CCP's finance worthy of attention. CCP quietly implements quantitative easing, injects 5 trillion yuan in 6 months. China's nuclear power plant discharges contain up to 9 times the tritium of Japan's Fukushima Daiichi. Doctor reveals shocking phenomena common in mainland Chinese hospitals. Over 2.4 million detained in China for national security concerns last year. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Expert, multiple unusual movements in CCP's finance worthy of attention. Professor Xie Tian from the Darla Moore School of Business at the University of South Carolina pointed out in an article published on March 8 that there have been frequent peculiar activities in China's financial sector recently, which merit thorough investigation. The deterioration of China's economic situation has not been addressed by the CCP during its two sessions. Instead, the party leader prioritized politics over the economy, leading to a more pessimistic outlook on China's future. According to an article by Epoch Times on March 7, based on statistics from a British investment immigration company, in 2022 and 2023, Chinese billionaires emigrating overseas took with them approximately $160 billion of wealth. In Hong Kong alone, it is estimated that 1,000 millionaires emigrated last year. Li Kaxing became a hot topic online once again for his rapid actions. A joke was widely shared, saying that when billionaires like Jack Ma, Pony Ma, and Wang Jianlin were racing, surprisingly, 90-year-old Li Kaxing came first. He jokingly said, who told you to start running only after hearing the gunshot? This joke, highlighting the urgency of fleeing China, has spread widely. The massive outflow of wealth from China has further weakened the already frail Chinese economy. On March 8, Professor Xie Tian published an article focusing on the unusual movements in China's finance. He mentioned a significant yet undernoticed event, the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, ICBC is withdrawing all its funds from the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation, DTCC, in the United States and closed one of its four accounts at DTCC on March 8. DTCC is the central securities depository for the U.S., providing post-trade services for the entire financial market, including settlement, delivery, and transfer of equity for all eight major exchanges in the U.S. Professor Xia analyzed that withdrawing all funds from DTCC implies that ICBC will no longer trade on the DTCC platform. There are three potential reasons for the CCP's actions. Either China is facing a foreign exchange shortage and needs to liquidate and withdraw, it fears financial sanctions from the US should relations worsen, or it is attempting to divest completely from US dollar assets as a proactive strike against the dollar. Besides the peculiar movements of ICBC, the People's Bank of China recently issued a notice on promoting counter-bond services in the interbank bond market, encouraging major banks to allow the public to buy bonds directly at the counter. This move aims to efficiently transform savings into bond investments. The public quickly interpreted this as the authorities targeting depositors' savings, suggesting that instead of saving money, tellers would persuade you to buy government bonds and it's not impossible that banks might automatically convert deposits into government bonds in the future, implying that bandits used to hide in the mountains, now they are in the banks. Professor Xie believes that the CCP, facing the crisis of rising prices and government deficits, might indeed freeze citizens' deposits, as a large amount of savings is in the hands of Chinese residents. Recently, there have been frequent reports of large sums of citizens' deposits being misappropriated, such as a case in Dalian where a woman's 13.1 million yuan, approximately 2 million US dollars, deposit disappeared after the bank bought gold with it. However, these incidents are officially claimed to be the individual actions of bank managers. According to Xia, the situation of a sinking ship and rats fleeing is a moment when unpredictable disasters may occur, hence the recent unusual movements in the CCP's financial sector deserve close attention. CCP quietly implements quantitative easing, injects 5 trillion yuan in 6 months. Quantitative easing, QE, is a way for central banks to encourage economic growth, especially during tough times, by using strategies that are a bit like lowering interest rates but are not the usual methods. In simple terms, it's like giving the economy a boost when it's feeling sluggish. 
In 2023, the People's Bank of China, PBOC, reported a big jump in its assets, from 40.8 trillion yuan, approximately 5.7 trillion US dollars, in July to 45.7 trillion yuan, about 6.43 trillion US dollars, by December, marking an increase of nearly 5 trillion yuan, approximately 0.7 trillion US dollars, within just six months. This was a much faster growth compared to the previous seven years, which saw an increase of about 7.8 trillion yuan, around 1.16 trillion US dollars. This sudden surge has made people wonder if the PBOC is using QE tactics. When looking closer, the big change wasn't in the box foreign assets but in its loans to other banks in China through various financial tools. Before 2014, the PBOC didn't really change how much it invested in other financial institutions, keeping it at about 4% of its total assets. After a policy change in 2015, the PBOC began to increase its market activities, and by December 2023, these investments had grown to make up 41% of its total assets, indicating a big shift in its approach. This change came about partly because, in 2015, the PBOC started allowing local government bonds to be used in certain financial transactions. A lot of the box investments are believed to be in these local government bonds, with many of them coming from bank loans that are, in turn, based on these bonds. Recently, local governments in China have been under financial stress, issuing a record amount of local government bonds to manage old debts and fund new projects. It's thought that many of these bonds were bought by commercial banks and then used as collateral with the PBOC, explaining part of the increase in its balance sheet. Mike Sun, a senior China investment strategy expert and private investment advisor in the United States, believes that although the CCP claims not to adopt a flood-like stimulus policy, it is actually secretly conducting QE, essentially printing money. In an interview with Epoch Times on March 8, Mike Sun stated that the money issued by the CCP is not flowing into the real economy or infrastructure investment but is being used by local governments to pay off debts, essentially rolling over old debts with new ones. Local governments are heavily indebted and many regions' public servants are not receiving salaries. Mike Sun said. Issuing bonds is one thing, but the key is who buys them. In the past, these bonds were mainly purchased by foreign capital and private investors, but now, commercial banks have become the main buyers. Commercial banks buying these bonds are essentially taking on the local government's debts, and after purchasing, they pledge these bonds to the PBOC. The PBOC then accepts these pledges, repackages these bonds, and re-enters them into the market as medium to long-term, ultra-long-term government bonds. After going around in circles, who ends up paying the bill? It's still the ordinary people. Mike Sun further stated, from a financial theory perspective, debt cannot disappear, it just shifts, meaning it transfers to someone else. Commercial banks pledge the new debts issued by local governments to the PBOC, which essentially means the PBOC is paying to take over these debts, and this is reflected in the balance sheet. In 2023, China's local government debt soared to a record high, with bond issuances reaching 9.14 trillion yuan, approximately 1.29 trillion US dollars, in the first 11 months, eclipsing previous totals. Despite initial controls on bond issuance, economic pressures led to an extra 1 trillion yuan, approximately 139 billion US dollars, in national bonds to alleviate local debt burdens. Goldman Sachs estimates the total local government debt at 94 trillion yuan, about 13 trillion US dollars, with the debt to GDP ratio rising sharply from 62.2% in 2019 to 76% in 2022. China's nuclear power plant discharges contain up to nine times the tritium of Japan's Fukushima Daiichi. Kyoto News has reported on the findings from the China Nuclear Energy Yearbook 2023, which focuses on the operational status and safety of China's nuclear power plants in 2022. According to the yearbook, 15 out of 19 monitoring stations across 13 Chinese nuclear facilities recorded tritium levels and discharge water that surpassed the annual limit set for Fukushima Daiichi's treated water, which is 22 trillion becquerels. 
Notably, the Qinshan nuclear power plant in Zhejiang province released 202 trillion becquerels of tritium in 2022 alone, amounting to 9.1 times the tritium levels found in the water discharged from Fukushima Daiichi. The Fukushima Daiichi plant was severely damaged by a tsunami following the Great East Japan earthquake in March 2011, resulting in the meltdown of three reactors. This disaster has led to the continuous production of contaminated water to cool the reactors, accumulating at a rate of about 90 tons per day. The Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO, manages this contaminated water by treating it to remove radioactive substances, except for tritium, and has stored approximately 1.34 million tons in 1,000 tanks, nearing the storage capacity of 1.37 million tons. Before discharging, TEPCO dilutes the treated water to ensure tritium levels are less than 1,500 becquerels per liter, significantly below Japan's safety threshold of 60,000 becquerels per liter. International standards for tritium vary, with the World Health Organization, who, setting the benchmark for drinking water at 10,000 becquerels per liter. Japan's discharge standards are considerably stricter, being about one-seventh of the WHO's guideline. Following the discharge of treated water from Fukushima Daiichi, both the Japanese government and the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, have affirmed that these measures align with global safety norms. Despite these figures, China remains steadfast in its opposition to the release of Fukushima Daiichi's treated water into the ocean, voicing concerns over other radioactive substances. This stance has led to a total ban on the import of Japanese aquatic products complicating efforts to address the issue. Doctor reveals shocking phenomena common in mainland Chinese hospitals. A mainland Chinese surgeon publicly disclosed on March 9 that there is a widespread phenomenon in hospitals across mainland China, minor surgeries are being escalated into major ones, and unnecessary surgeries are being performed, all related to the new medical insurance system. A 77-year-old elderly person was suspected of having pancreatic cancer during a physical examination at the University of Hong Kong Shenzhen Hospital and underwent surgery that resulted in the removal of the entire pancreas, spleen, and parts of surrounding organs. Upon investigating the medical reports, the family discovered that the elderly person did not have any tumors and passed away two months after the surgery. The patient's daughter recently accused the University of Hong Kong Shenzhen Hospital of suspected organ harvesting and sought criminal accountability for the hospital. In response to this, Mr. Guan, who had worked as a surgeon in China, told Epic Times that it is common for hospitals in mainland China to perform more surgeries to earn more money. Minor surgeries are made major, surgeries that could be optional are often recommended, and even unnecessary surgeries are performed. This is because, after the authorities implemented the policy of hospitals being responsible for their profits and losses and pushed hospitals to the market, it led to hospitals and doctors pursuing economic benefits through performing more surgeries. Mr. Guan believes that patients are vulnerable and passive, lacking the professional knowledge to make informed decisions. Ideally, patients wouldn't need to understand complex medical knowledge, and if the doctors were morally upright and the societal moral standards high, patients could simply trust their doctors. However, the moral fabric of society has been eroded by the CCP, leading to a lack of trust between patients and doctors, with doctors also being wary of potential medical disputes with patients. Regarding suspicions from patient families that the hospital might have sold the removed organs, Mr. Guan pointed out that it's impossible to determine from the available data and medical records whether the removed organs were used for transplantation. However, in recent years, the University of Hong Kong Shenzhen Hospital has been actively developing organ transplantation programs. The second dean of the hospital, Lu Chongmao, suggested sharing the organ bank between mainland China and Hong Kong and centralizing transplant surgeries at the University of Hong Kong Shenzhen Hospital, which raised concerns among Hong Kong residents. Mr. Guan emphasized that organ transplantation in mainland China saw an explosive increase following the CCP's persecution of Falun Gong, involving crimes of live organ harvesting supported and promoted by CCP's administrative departments. Evidence shows that recent victims are not limited to Falun Gong practitioners, leading to widespread fear. 
Mr. Guan mentioned that there have been media reports in mainland China exposing doctors for harvesting and selling patients' organs. For example, in August 2020, Lu Sen, a chief physician at Jiangsu Provincial People's Hospital, and others were convicted of destroying corpses for extracting patient organs. After his release, Lu Sen disclosed to mainland media that the organ removal was assigned by the hospital. The harvested organs were sent to the PLA's 302 Hospital in Beijing and Tianjin First Central Hospital. According to investigations by the World Organization to investigate the persecution of Falun Gong, both hospitals are suspected of harvesting organs from Falun Gong practitioners. Over 2.4 million detained in China for national security concerns last year. The Prosecutor General of the Supreme People's Procuratorate, Ying Yong, reported on March 8 during the two sessions that last year, more than 2.4 million people were arrested or prosecuted for national security reasons. Observers say that Beijing's intensified efforts to maintain stability and social surveillance, including victims under residential surveillance at a designated location, could make the actual count far exceed 2.4 million people, possibly significantly underestimated. Zheng Qianyuan, a consulting member of the Cross-Strait Relations Group at the new Taiwan National Policy think tank in Taipei, pointed out that this figure might be severely underestimated. He mentioned that Ng Yang's report failed to reveal that aside from formal procedures, the CCP also employs secretive detention methods like residential surveillance at a designated location. These extrajudicial practices are extensively abused by the CCP's judicial authorities and represent one of the most severe violations of human rights by the Beijing authorities. This allows CCP law enforcement to detain individuals without following legal procedures in numerous black jails. Regarding the large number of individuals detained for violating national security laws, Sound of Hope interviewed Associate Professor Feng Chongyi from the University of Technology, Sydney an expert on China issues, on March 9. Currently, anything involving national security, state secrets, even economic data, entities, such as company data, and personal profiles, can all be classified under the category of state secrets. Accessing these materials, even for media interviews or reporting, could be considered as leaking or stealing state secrets. Feng Chongyi believes that the CCP uses the national security law to persecute the public and also to strike against political opponents. Moreover, suspicion is cast on many within the system for being disloyal to Xi Jinping, failing to uphold the two establishes and the two safeguards, leading to accusations of espionage. The charge of espionage is particularly useful because it involves state secrets. It allows for closed trials without the need for witnesses or court appearances. Framing and entrapment become convenient, so this method is widely used for political persecution and striking against political opponents. Feng Chongyi warns that the situation for Chinese people is perilous, and overseas individuals doing business in China also face dangers. For instance, Yang Qiyuan, the vice chairman of the Taiwan National Party, was arrested by the CCP in 2022, and Fu Chaiyana, the chief editor of the Taiwan Eight Banners Culture, was arrested in 2023. Both were charged with engaging in activities that endanger national security and are still under secret investigation by the national security authorities, without having gone through formal judicial proceedings. The reality is that everyone is at risk. When the CCP is pleased, they need you for investment, business, and trade. When displeased, everyone is labeled a spy or agent. Going abroad for business requires understanding the market, right? Accessing this information is considered stealing state secrets, and those providing this information domestically are labeled as spies or leakers of state secrets. This reality represents some terrifying practices. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.